Okay, so now that we understand what a couple is and how we can calculate the moment of a couple, I want to talk about force couple systems. So in this video, I'm going to explain the idea behind a force couple system, and then I'll explain why you might need a force couple system. And then in the following videos, we'll do a few examples so you really understand what this force couple system thing is. So the idea behind a force couple system is say you have a body right here, some kind of rigid body. And on this body, you have a bunch of forces. So F1, you have F2 over here, you have F3 going down, and you just have all these forces acting on this body. The idea behind a force couple system is that we can replace all of these external forces at some point anywhere that we want with an equivalent resultant force and a moment force. So in other words, if I drew that same body over here on the right hand side and I said, what is the equivalent force couple system at this point O? Then I can say, well, it's going to be some resultant vector R and some moment vector, let's just call MO. Now this resultant force and this moment force is the equivalent force couple system of all of these forces that were originally acting on this body. So in other words, these two scenarios are statically equivalent. So this force couple system right here, which is comprised of this R and MO forces, is equivalent to this set of forces right here. And that's all a force couple system is. It's just saying that you can replace this set of forces with some resultant force and some moment. And you can sort of see that this moment is really the moment caused by all of these different forces, whereas the resultant vector is just our usual way of calculating the resultant of a given set of forces. Now, I want to be very, very clear. This is not seeing whether or not this body right here is in static equilibrium. Instead, we are just looking at the set of forces, this force set, and what is the equivalent force couple for that system of forces. So this is really an idea around system of forces, not static equilibrium. However, you can use force couple system tools to solve problems in statics, and that's what we're going to do. Okay, so now that we understand that this force and this moment is statically equivalent to this set of forces on the original body, let's talk about why you would need a force couple system. So imagine, imagine you have a beam right here, this beam, and there's a pin at one side and a roller on the other. And on this beam, there is a system of forces. Let's just do three of them. So this is F1, this is F2, and this is F3. Now, if the question asks, what is the resultant of these forces and where is it located? Well, we can use what we know about force couple systems to solve that problem, to answer that question. So the question really is, what is, what is the resultant vector and where is its location on this beam? Now, again, this is not a question of whether or not this beam right here is in static equilibrium. Obviously, there's a pin here, a roller here, so there will be reactions here, right? But this question is not asking us about this beam's static equilibrium state. Instead, it's just saying, what is the resultant of this set of forces and where is that located? Okay, so the first part I would say is pretty easy. We can find the resultant by just summing the forces in the y direction. So the resultant is really going to be F1 plus F2 plus F3. And again, this is just the magnitude. This will just give us the magnitude of R. Now, intuitively, we can see that these forces are acting downwards. So the resultant is actually going to be some value which acts downward. But that's besides the point. The point is, the resultant is just a sum of these forces. Now, the second part of that question is, well, where is that resultant force located? Well, if I drew that beam uh, one more time here, so this is the pin, this is the roller, we know that this resultant force R is going to act at some distance, right? At some distance along this beam. 
And for simplicity, let's just uh, say that this left side is A, the right side is B. We know that this resultant force that's acting at some point between A and B is going to be some distance from A or B if you wanted to, but let's just use A. It's going to be some distance from A and that distance is going to be X. Now we already figured out what the resultant force is in terms of its magnitude, but we don't know where it's acting. And this is where the idea of force couple systems comes into play. If we look back at this original diagram, we can see that F1, F2, and F3 are acting on this beam, and therefore they can have some moment about point A. Now, again, we are not looking at the reaction of A. Instead, we're just looking at the moment that is caused by this set of forces. So what is that moment? Well, I'll just call that moment A. And that moment is going to be, well, it's going to be F1 times the distance X1, and X1 is just going to be from point A to F1. So that right here is X1. Now, to that, we're going to add F2 times X2 plus F3 times X3, right? Because in the original problem, we have three different forces, and they're acting at some distance away from A. So this set of forces is going to cause some moment about point A right here. And you can see that the direction is going to be this way. Now again, this is not a question of static equilibrium. So you might be saying, Calvin, there's a pin there. There's no moment. And you're right. The reaction there is a pin, and therefore the reaction will not have a moment. Or in other words, the moment reaction at point A is going to be zero. However, if you just look at these three forces and just forget about the beam, don't even think that the beam is there, you just have this point A and this point B, these three forces are going to cause some moment about point A. And that's what we calculate here. And what is so special about this moment? Well, what's special about that moment is that that is the moment that's caused by this reaction force or resultant force right here. It's going to be some distance x from point A, and it's going to be equivalent to m of A. So r times some distance x is going to be equal to ma. Now, if I drew that same beam one more time, a third time, I can say that this resultant vector right here, I can move that resultant vector. So this is that resultant vector. I'm going to move that some distance x all the way to point A. Now, because I moved it from this point to this point, I need to account for the moment that this resultant force would have caused if it stayed where it was. And that moment is going to be m of a. It's going to be this moment right here, and that is equivalent to r times some distance x. Now the cool thing is r times x is equal to m of a. That's cool. We already know m of a. And, and again, that was just the sum of the moments caused by the original three forces. So really, this equation becomes m of a is equal to r times x. Now, in the first part of the problem, we already figured out what r was. So this is easy, right? We just sum the forces. And then m a, we calculated over here. And so because we know this value and this value, we can calculate x by just dividing r on both sides. So m a over r is equal to x. And that gives us the distance that this resultant force is acting from point A. Now, if we look at these two diagrams right here, the idea behind a force couple system is that this original force system right here, which is just R, is statically equivalent to this force couple system in this second diagram. And that's all a force couple system is. It's just saying if you had some set of forces, in this case a resultant force, and if you move that resultant force anywhere else on this beam, you have to account for the moment that the original force would cause. And so going back to the first diagram that we were looking at, we said that this system of forces right here is statically equivalent to this force couple system right here, R times O, or R times M of O. And that's exactly what's going on here. 
we have some resultant force, or which is really a derivation of these three forces, and that is equivalent to R being moved all the way to point A, but because it got moved some distance, we need to account for that force movement, right? And that is the moment that was originally caused by R. So that's all a force couple system is. It is just looking at the system of forces. We are not solving a problem on static equilibrium, although you can use force couple systems to solve static equilibrium problems. Okay, that might be a lot of theory. Let's go into some examples in the following videos, and I will see you there.